And guys, we went straight to United and bought us some food today. <laughs> Well, guys, welcome back to Red River Living. Um, we had the opportunity yesterday to get out of the house and go to the lake and spend some time fishing yesterday. So, yeah, we y'all know we've started our garden to table series and we had posted one of those videos and I had a buddy from Louisiana comment to me and he texted me a message and his version was tree to table and he had about four or five cat squirrels laid out there that he had went out and hunted and killed. So it kind of inspired me that I sent him back a text and I sent him a picture of the crappie we'd caught yesterday and I said well here's my version of lake to table. So guys we've got about 20 crappie here to clean today and um, we're going to show you all that, and then later on this afternoon, we're going to try to have us a little fish fry. And we're filleting these crappies. Um, my family prefers them without bones in them, so that's how we're going to clean them today. If y'all can't tell, this here is my Black & Decker fillet knife. And if you don't know anything, or you might know, this is a vintage Black & Decker. For Christmas one year, me and my son, we have I don't, I can't tell you how many fish I've cleaned over the years, but we have tried and tried different uh, fillet knives, and nothing ever seemed to work as good as this old Black & Decker one. And for one Christmas, my son told me, he said, I have got a surprise for you. And that surprise was, quote, a vintage Black & Decker um, electric knife that had never been used. So when I opened it up, I couldn't believe it. I, I was just about tickled pink over my Christmas gear. But these fillet knives, hey, they're like I said, they're called vintage for a reason because they're long. It's hard to come across them anymore. I don't want to knock on anybody else's fillet knife, but when Black and Decker made this one, they knew what they were doing. We came in and put them on ice, and putting them on ice before you clean them, if you have that opportunity, one of the things that does is it really firms them up and really makes it a lot easier to clean them. Show you a little trick here. As you can tell, I'm trying to get all the meat off this crappie right here, and I run it all the way to the end of the tail. Right, well, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of meat on that. And if I'm pushing on this and it tears off, so I can put my finger right here and just hold that uh, skin back to where I can finish filleting it off and everything. So, guys, you can see right here. Do you see where it just peeled right off the tail? See, I left me just a little bit right there. I'll stick my finger in it. That just lets me hold that skin while I finish fill filleting it off like that. So I'm going to show you how I was taught to cut this rib cage out. I bring my knife right up here to the edge of the bones right here. And I just run it down like that. Then when I get here, old boy called this in Louisiana, he used to call this little strip the catfish. A lot of people just circle their knife right off and cut that off. With a largemouth bass, that's possible. But with here, what I'm going to do is slide the knife under the bottom of the ribcage bones and cut back toward the top, and you don't waste as much meat that way. And what I call, what he called then, this strip of meat right here, he always referred to as the catfish strip. And as an old boy in Louisiana, whatever. If he was right or wrong, I don't know, but he, I was cleaning some fish and he's a hold home in it. And he said, you got to save that piece of meat. And hey, when a mess of fish, it's a bite of fish. So I keep it now and um, 
just kind of particular about it. And with this knife in my hand, I can kind of tell um, if the knife rides up on the rib bones or whatever. shows that fillet on the outside edge of it there. So guys, we've come in here in the house and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna give them a real good rinse is I like to, um, I'll take these fish out of the water and I'm just kind of drain off a little bit. Here I normally do this out there in the ice chest. And in a minute I'll show y'all um, how much washed off of them in just a minute. As a rule of thumb, our normal practice here is, and this doesn't matter if it's catfish, crappie, or whatever, I'm gonna rinse them three times. Once they've been rinsed three times, their bruise is really good at that point. And you can just kind of see with water and you see there's still some stuff coming off of them just by rinsing them right there. I'm also feeling of those fillets. I know I'm not feeling each individual fillet, but I am feeling the fillets. And see, I just pulled that little piece off of them somewhere. Um, usually, if you um, find a piece that's still got a bone on it, hey, and here it is right here, just by rinsing it off. I'm feeling I felt that bone right there. Although it was, hey, I filleted it, you still got to be careful of having the bones and everything in them. So that's why I'm, when I'm in here rubbing around, I feel it for the fish and see if there's any bones or anything on them. And especially with us having the kids and all. Well, guys, we've got our fish cleaned. We've got our pots cleaned out already. Um, we've got some oil in our pots. Um, we're cooking with peanut oil today. Just kind of give you a quick overview here. This is a stainless steel cooker. And this was built by my dad back in the 70s. And it's been passed down to me. And I cannot tell you how much fish we have fried on this cooker. Um, we take it to fish cooks um, when we cook on base and stuff. But anyway, we're fixing to get this fired up here. Get the gas hooked up to it. That was one of the things I did to it. I added a... Um, quick disconnect on that so we didn't have to tie that on no more well guys um i just got some cornmeal right here you can buy this already mixed up seasoned and everything we use louisiana sometimes but today i just went and got some cornmeal out of the cabinet and there's two things i like to use that's this tony's chacharia seasoning creole seasoning or the slap your mama if you want it a little more spicy the slap your mama is a little more spicy but these are the two things i like to add to this and you can see i kind of covered it right there and i mix it around and i really at this point when i look at it and i see that it basically still looks like cornmeal I want to see a little bit of color from this redness in it. It's what I'm wanting to see. But you want to be careful with this slap your mom. It'll get too spicy for the wife and kids. So. But you see I kind of covered it up again. And now when I look at this, and I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, I can see that it's starting to, you can see a little bit in it. The spicier you want it, the more you want to add to it though. One of the things I will tell you, uh, both of these can be bought at Academy <coughs> stores back there in the cooking section. And it's I'm pretty confident it's cheaper. It comes in a bigger container and it's cheaper there at Academy. So normally when I'm in town, that's where I pick that up at to have here at the house. Over here, we've got the cooker going. Um, one of the most important things um, is having your temp gauge here. So you want to be able to check your oil temp. We're at 190, 217, 
that just depends on where you move this across. I try to get this up to about 350 before I start cooking. Okay guys, I'm just gonna grab my fillets right here. Guys, we've got our fish cooked already. We've got our fries sitting here. They're cooking. Turn it up just a little bit. The grease is cooled down right now. We make our own hush puppies. It's a recipe that came from my mom. And I like the grease to cool down to about 320 for that. And by putting your fries into that grease, that cools that grease down so you're not too hot right there. So, uh, just kind of a quick thing. These hush puppies are a soft hush puppy. And Debbie has mixed all the dry ingredients up here, all the wet ingredients up here. And in a video, uh, later on, y'all be watching, we'll do a video on just our hush puppies alone. Um, the only thing I've changed over the years with this recipe is we like a little jalapeno in them. And sometimes I add that to them, so I'll show y'all that in a video later on. But I'm fixing to mix the two ingredients together and then start dropping them. So guys, I've mixed the two ingredients and I put the dry in on top of the wet. This seems to mix up a little bit better. And I don't mix these until right before we're ready to cook them. The, um, hey, the onions start sweating and everything and it can make them runny. So what I do is I wait till I'm ready to mix these up. And then I just take a dropper here and just start dropping them. Guys, I'll be sharing this recipe on these with y'all. Like, like Keely said, we got a little more time. I'll uh, go through the mixture of these. We haven't served these anywhere for anybody that everybody don't just rave over the hush puppies. So. They're definitely probably the highlight of the meal. Yes. <laughs> if I, I have... The fish is good, but the hush puppies are real good. <laughs> So guys, if you'll look in here, he'll get a shot in here. You'll see that some of these hush puppies have already rolled over. They'll almost naturally, as they're getting done, just start rolling themselves over. See that one roll right there? If your pot's got too many hush puppies in it, there's not enough room for them to do that. And I'm pretty close to that, but I've noticed these are starting to roll right here. Um, grease must have been a little bit hotter over there because these haven't really started rolling over on this side yet. But. And hey, if you roll them over yourself, and they roll right back over, they're not done enough yet to stay over. So, it's kind of just a rule of thumb, and all you're doing is just brown them up. I keep some store bots on hand sometimes that I want. Um, they just, you know, almost like a cornbread. They're a lot thick or heavier, I would say. Whereas these are real light. I got a little one right here. What do you want? I'm hungry. You're hungry? What do you want? Piece of fish or french fry? French fry. 
French fry. French fry? You're a French fry, aren't you? Oh, yummy. yummy. I like to hold them up there for a little bit and try to get as much oil drain off of them as possible. Well, United I was going to say, and guys, we went straight to United and bought us some food today. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little version of our uh, Lake to Table. The guy from Louisiana just kind of inspired me. He was being comical from... Um, tree to table so this is lake to table today uh we're fixing to head in the house and get to eating supper it's getting late guys as always we appreciate y'all watching and we'd like it if you'd like and subscribe we'll see y'all next time who's toting the hush puppies in me all right you got that one tote it no don't Two eat it tote it tote like it yeah grab it like that Two ma'am. here's the hush puppies that's fresh fries you got the fries all right i'm gonna get the fish Oh, hold that, don't spill those.